all of the various ruins stretch up around you and you can hear people hawking wares at various avenues down this alley what do you guys all do complain about my socks um you know yeah first i had to get my composure together anyone care for a jelly bean a jelly bean Jelly bean. You know what? I will take some I mean, goddamn jelly beans. I feel like I shouldn't have wet socks. I'm wearing boots. All right. Um, Chance, go ahead and give me a D6 to determine what flavor you get. Anyone else that wants to pick a jelly bean may take a jelly bean. They got to roll a D6. Thanks. And I will tell, I'll tell flavors afterwards. That's a D8, but a 3, I'll take the 3. Who, who oh, am I standing that. next to? I need to know who I'm standing next to. Um, so, you're you're uh, all kind of about five, six feet apart from each other in various little spots. And this is kind of the entryway to the alley. Anybody that pops through a way will arrive here. Every so often, somebody else will pop in and kind of like look at you guys and be like, why are you guys just standing in the entry? Like, what are you doing? Like, wander off. I'm just curious, like, while, while he's offering us jelly beans, who am I, who am I standing by? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean... Uh, you're just kind of in a row in the alley. Um, Whomever you wish to stand no, I'm, by. I'm gonna lean over next. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like look over, like back and forth, and just be like, "Where I'm from, we don't take candy from strangers." Uh, <laughs> Very well. Might want to think about that before you pop it in your mouth. Oh. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start walking. I'm gonna throw up my mouth and chew it loudly while uh, saying, "Well, where I'm from, strangers give me candy all the time." It tastes like grass. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so here's the deal. Whose parents gave them some kind of magical bag to keep their things in? Wait, I come from a magical family, so I think it would make sense, yeah? They know what I gotta get. Okay. What about you? Well, I, I mean... Some, like, oh, sorry. No, you're good. You can go. I was just going to say I need some, like, magical Jenko jeans. <laughs> yes. There you go. Hilarious. I like See, I'm going to buy a new backpack, but uh, I'm throwing this old one away if any of y'all need one and don't have a dollar. Okay. Oh, I keep talking it's just a backpack. It's a backpack. It's not even magical. It's just, like, burlap. It's got, like, eight side you pockets. I I came with a Jan Sport. Huh. Yeah, a Jan lost Sport. Me a it's uh, a Jan Sport. Jan Sport's all I need. It's the backpack that everybody used in the nineties. Yeah. If you got the fancy one, it was leather on the bottom. That's what I was. Yeah, there's a lot of know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I still have I mine. Gotcha. <laughs> That's dope, honestly. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and write down. Uh, what your school bag is under your school bag in your giblet. And let me know if it's expanded magically or not. Um, I'd just say I have like a magic backpack. Okay. Yeah. Let me know how it's magic. A uh, bag of holding esque. Uh, it can just hold more than you think it would. How much? Well, at least all the looks I need, if not more. Okay. Uh, is there like a weight displacement to enchantment on it? Oh, I would assume so. Yeah, it's magical. I can't okay. be, you know, having 300 pounds on my back. Okay. So write down the extent of the weight. Like, what's the weight limit of your charm? I'll say it's 300 pounds. Okay. So go ahead and write all that down in your under your school book. Under yeah, your school bag. Magical. Magic backpack, no, they don't. Pounds. They do not have to be magical. I am assuming that when I left my parents' house, I had my like school backpack on, like full of snacks and my cockroach. Fantastic. Just write that down. Uh, I'm going to buy myself with some of my pocket cash, just like a non magical fashion style backpack. But I'm going to try to get myself a little magical pencil case. Something that uh, always make sure I have a pen or pencil on me. Smart. Fantastic. 
So I feel like that's not too that's not too fantastical. Uh, <laughs> Rachel showed me uh, a, a backpack that she suggested I take. I told her to take it, but it's kind of a silly backpack. Is it like it's a Lisa? Quite literally, backpack from Dora the Explorer. Oh, okay, I gotcha. I wanted to describe I... it. It's purple, and it talks, and it has an eyes and a mouth. <laughs> I was like this close to being like, is it a Lisa Frank backpack? Cause... He is an all-consuming <laughs> god. <laughs> Backpack from Dora the Explorer. Okay. <laughs> I mean, All right. He's definitely like some sort of eldritch being. Listen. Wow, <laughs> they're expensive now. Tune rules apply, so you can't just if that's if that's bugging you, then I got some things to tell you about Bugs Bunny that'll blow your fucking mind. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> the time Lord. Uh, can we not get into that, please? Holy <laughs> shit! He could beat Thanos. Okay. He could beat Thanos. Well, <laughs> yeah. When you get cartoon logic, yeah, Bugs all, Bunny all is the most powerful. Set up a fake TSA line and shame yeah. him into pulling uh, the line up uh, into putting the gun uh, in the tray. Uh, Listen. That's lovely all right. and all. Well, I guess uh, after I get my book. So I hold on a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Got your books Who yet? says you got, you got your books? You ain't got your books yet. We're not, oh, I was just planning that's... for the future. You just better calm down, Sonny Jim. Let's let's focus on getting there. <laughs> all right. Sonny Jim. All right. So as you guys, do you guys all follow Jeremy out of the entryway and into the alley? Does he look like yeah, what he's doing? Uh, well, I'm I'm heading towards. I see a I see a large group of people around my age going, you know, somewhere. And I'm not sure where, but I'm that's where I'm heading is that group of people where they're they they seem to be heading towards. So I look fairly confident like I know what I'm doing because I'm not trying to put off the new guy energy. Fantastic. Okay. Um can I use my brains to determine if he's going the right way? I'll give you this for free. Uh, as you look around, there's not really another direction to go. Okay. You're kind of in an area of just like an entryway. You just kind of yeah. got to leave this area if you want to. Okay. Well, yeah. Then we're do going. anything. Yeah. People are still popping in around you guys, kind of giving you like weird looks. So, uh, you guys are starting to walk towards this uh, little group. Um, and you see some of them have strange looking hats, like not pointy hats. Not like Pope hats, but just kind of like floppy on one side and feathers sticking out of the other. And they all look like they're not here like the first time. Felix, do you uh, do you approach them like straight up, like just like approach them or do you just kind of follow them like deeper into the alley? Is, is it like the majority of people as they go? The the group that you've picked to follow kind of looks like a lot younger than than some of the people here, but definitely not like you know first uh, first house. Well, that would be me. I'm second house, so yeah. Um, I'm gonna follow them, but as I'm following them, I'm watching to my sides. I'm just like, I know I gotta find books, you know, mm -hmm. um, because Amazon didn't have them, bitches. So no, um, no. right? Yeah, and they laughed at me when I went to Barnes and Noble. So I, uh, yeah. so I'm. I'm I'm watching. I'm from a Muggle family, you know. I'm not. I don't. This is very Ooh. new to me. Um, so I'm looking left and right, like trying to scope out maybe something that I need to stop for. But okay. other than that, I figure they know the way to the school. I'm gonna follow them. Okay. So eventually, they stop at a little cafe and and they go inside, kind of tittering, um, you know, back and forth to themselves. And you realize that you have brought the group into like a little a square, and there's several little alleys running off of the main stretch where there's like residential and kind of cafes and a few, you know, shops and such. Down each of the various alleys, you see, you know, different things 
found one, you see uh, what's obviously like a zoo or like a menagerie of some kind where there's just like all sorts of magical creatures kind of like wandering around in an alley. Down another alley, uh, you see various bookshops. Uh, and at the end of that alley, you see um, a large administrative looking building, kind of with like a dome at the top. Down yet another alley, you see out far, far, you, you understand that you're looking much further than the alley seems to be. It's kind of non Euclidean. And you see far at the end of an alley uh, a train station with a tall uh, spire atop it. And I'll go ahead and show you this. I love visual aids. Uh, show for players. everybody. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. Listen, I can't afford an aid, let alone aids. All right. Uh. Can everybody see? Can everybody see this station? That is. Um, that's the White that's pretty. House. <laughs> I feel like yeah, that's I, a place that could actually really exist. Did you do like? I was wondering about that space. Capitol building. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. So underneath that arch, so where the mm -hmm. top of the door would be, that little arch right there looks like an eye, like just peering up. It does. Yeah. A good eye. Uh, you can actually see as you concentrate on that little spot. You see the little eye, the little pupil on Iris move back and forth, <laughs> scanning people as they walk through the door. That's beautiful. Down another alley, you see. Down the menagerie. Oh, fuck me. The as you see trash cans kind of hopping around, being like obviously magical, but you're not sure like what the fuck they're doing. They're just kind of hopping up and down the street. Let's see. And down the last alley, um, you see an individual in long pink robes, a white mask, and tall, tall rabbit ears. Ooh. I don't okay. like it. <laughs> I don't know whether I want I like it or not. I can't decide. It's somewhat terrifying. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a good or a bad idea to talk to this individual at this moment. Is this <clears> question <throat> does I'm... Harry Potter exist in this universe? The book yes. Right? Okay, oh, yeah. so let's let's I be mean... clear. Okay, it is mid February. 2008 okay so last year the the what was it tumblr was made yeah and the last book and came out. the last harry potter book came out in the summer okay so this is a hundred percent of a thing that anybody who's muggle has probably read in your age group okay, okay. so i don't like the color pink because i think because mm, umbridge yeah. umbridge yeah mm -hmm. yeah for sure the I got you. Just presumes that this creature has evil tendencies. Would, would any of us, having had some learning in the in the normal world and minor magical learning, know sure. that this is a famous being? Everybody, give me a brains check. Um, please don't use your magic. Just roll stat. stat. Yeah. I don't roll magic. <laughs> this. Um. So the DC was Eight. ten. So everybody that rolled under a 10, go ahead and take an adversity token. Sabine, um, you recognize this individual to be a fairy. You know that these individuals are dangerous, but not necessarily malicious. You know to be very careful about your name around fairy folk. They're covetous of names. One last thing is that you know that they worship um, a god that has no name. All right. I rolled so low. I'm going to say I've seen a, a documentary on these. You got to make yourself real tall. Put your arms up in the air. Be loud. You're not that tall. 
It's fucking hilarious. It's like a bear. You think it's a bear? I think I'm going to head towards the books. Um, also, because that administrative building is down there. Mm-hmm. And I feel like maybe that might be part of the school. I can get some direction as to what I'm supposed to be doing here. Okay. Fantastic. Anybody else uh, Anybody else going to follow him? Those books are a good idea, yes. Get a wand and a broom after. Yeah, let's follow. I was going to say, I'll follow begrudgingly and quietly. <laughs> I'm probably going to want to be away from the fairy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Raven, how about you? I am feeling like at this point, I... I'm so overwhelmed by what the fuck is going on. Mm-hmm. I'm just following anybody who looks. They look like they're my age. I'm like, this has got to be. I must have like stumbled into some like convention or something. <laughs> Are you gonna try and coax her out with some candy? <laughs> oh no! So you guys make your way down. Um, eventually, you run into. A strange-looking old woman sitting outside a wand shop in a rocking chair. The woman is obviously blind, but as you walk past, like, walking towards her shop, she turns to look towards your group. What do you do? Hey there, beautiful. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to be very respectful. Uh, hi, ma'am. Hello, hello ma'am. Um, do you know where a good place to find some school books would be? Ma'am, would this be a good place? I'm, I'm attending the school and I'm, uh, I'm going to need a wand. It's on my, uh, it's on my school list. Uh, would this be a good place to look for one? Look for a wand, boy. You don't look for a wand. But come here. Let me taste your blood. I'll get you a wand. I'm gonna look around, and uh, she just want, like wants me like reach out to her. Like, what does she want? She wants me to go inside the shop with her. Uh, yeah, she's uh, she stands up from her chair and beckons you inside the shop. Are there other people around that see her? That hear her tell me this? Oh yeah. No, nobody seems to bat an eye at this. All right, so as I look around and see nobody bats an eye, I'm just going to kind of slowly, like a shy, begrudging walk into the shop, like, okay. The shop door closes behind you all with a rickety slam. Okay. So I'm just going to... jump gonna a little take, bit. Take note and keep moving. All right. Um, as you all approach the counter that the old woman has, with no trouble at all, uh, gotten behind, uh, she sits down and pulls out a wavy chris and sets it on the counter. And she beckons at you, waving you over. Come, come, sit. And as she says, sit. Five stools grow out of the floorboards. I guess I'll go take a seat. This feels sketchy. Yeah, we're about to make some blood act or something. Okay, I'm sitting down. I'm not. Let's do this. I knew there was going to be a lot of unexpected adventures and unexpected things happening. I'll sit down, but I'm going to say audibly, did she, did she say taste our blood? It's a simple blood magic. One of the few that are legal. I'm a neon. And what will it tell you? Are you? It's a good thing I'm magic. Hmm. <laughs> I just need a drop, and I'll heal you up. Well... But I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm gonna like totally awkwardly like offer her my neck, just be like, eh, eh just like, get it over with. I'm not a vampire, child. Uh, I'm gonna grab the Chris and prick my finger. I know you're ah, there you go. That's enough. 
Uh, she takes a long, crooked finger and takes a drop of blood on her tongue. She stands up and walks deep into the stacks. She comes back a moment later and sets a wand. I'd imagine it's a slightly longer wand made of a rich mahogany. Nice dark color wood there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful grain pattern. As you pick up the wand, you feel deep in your bones a vibration and a calling. You know this wand is bonded to you and you alone. In anyone else's hands, it would be but a stick. Okay. Well, who's next? Oh, shit, that's what I was afraid of? I'm going to put my wrist right out. <laughs> uh, she takes the Chris uh, uh, and pricks a finger of Tatsuo and takes a drop of blood, savors it for a moment. Little goblin boy. Yes. I think I know just the thing. Wanders not far. And comes back quickly, setting down a wand in front of you on a nice satin cushion. Is this, this going to cost anything? I've already taken what it costs. I like the sounds of that, but oh, oh, oh. let's take it. I'm uh, going to be ungrateful. Don't want to lose as you. As you pick up the wand, uh, you feel a thrumming deep in your soul. And you know this wand is yours and yours alone. What does your wand look like? All right. My wand is going to be ash wood with very clear grain, like it was carved out of a trunk. I like it. Uh, well. Uh, and then... Uh... Well, well, I see five and two have their ones. Well, when in Rome, and I'll, I'll stick my finger out. Lovely. Uh, she pricks your finger, takes a drop of blood. <laughs> Life blood runs through your veins slow. Yes. Yes, you're more than a morsel, I think. She stands up and walks deep into the stacks. You're not sure exactly where she went, as the shop didn't seem very large from the outside. Uh, she walks back up and puts a wand down in front of you. You feel a flash go through your skin. And you know this wand, should it ever be separated from you, would dissolve into ash. What does your wand look like? It's it's black, but it's hand carved and it's got a sort of a hilt for a handle. Mm. Um, because it's like a shiny black. But as you look close to it, you realize that it's the natural color of the wood and you can see the grain in it. And on the very bottom, there's a something sticking out the very bottom. It's the butt of the feather. Ah, uh, I gotcha. Fantastic. That wand has been here for, I dare say, two or three hundred years. I thought I'd not sell it. Hmm. But th thank you. And I'm going to sit back down examining the wand. Well, now that we're done with the rude boys, women, what say you? I'm sure you need you a wand. Good. She hands you the Chris instead of taking it up herself. I'll go ahead and take it from her and... I break my finger. Uh, she takes a drop of blood, 
savors it for a moment, nods, and wanders into the shelves. Um, she brings you back a wand in a box, opens the box, and dumps the wand out onto a silk cushion in front of you. I'll probably uh, stare down at it for a moment, and then I'll go ahead and reach out and pick it up with both my hands to look at it closer. My wand is made of wisteria, and mm -hmm. it's curvy, and there would be slight etchings of ivy with some thorns. As you pick up your wand, you feel as though you've been pricked by those thorns. And as you move your hand away, there's no marking on your hands, but those little thorns seem to have turned red on your wand. You know that this wand is not able to be parked from you. You know you could call it if you wanted, with nary a thought. Yay. The old woman turns to you, Raven, looking somewhere above your head. She has not blinked the entire time that you have been in this chamber, that you've seen, anyway. She offers you the knife. Well, girl, you want to learn, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Give me a drop of your blood. I prick my finger. As the drop of blood falls from your finger, she reaches out and snags it from the air. Uh, you see she sticks it in her mouth and waves a hand at you, and you feel a slight burn as the section of finger that you stabbed cleaves shut. She wanders off into the stacks. There's a few moments, maybe about a 30 minute break, and you're not sure exactly where she's gone. And then she is there behind you. Oh. Shadows clinging to her. And she leans in close, and you see she has another box. She opens the box. There's no pillow for you. She reaches out towards you with the wand. Take it. Going to gently pick it up and kind of, in awe, kind of look at it and look at her and... Still not fully processing what's going on, and I'm just going to be like, thank you. Uh, this is very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is a flash of your senses. Um, you know that this wand is intrinsically part of you. You've always had this wand, really. That's why you didn't get a pillow. In the dead of night, crying into your pillow. You've had this wand. <laughs> when your parents fought, you had this wand. When it stormed and thundered out outside, you had this wand. And you wonder why you even needed to come here. And she's tasting a drop of your blood. She waves a hand at you. And your finger burns as it heals. And she looks at you and says, I don't have a wand for you, girl. You already have your wand. That's not fair. You made me cry. <laughs> the woman sort of looks around at you and stands up and walks out from behind her counter. Uh, and she leads you all out of her store. Come now. That's all I have for any of you. No one gets a second wand. Best take care of yours. 
Yes, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, thank you. As you are hustled out back into the alley, uh, you realize a sort of dark malaise has washed off your shoulders. A weight is kind of lifted from you as you take in the all of the color and brightness of the alley. Uh, when you look behind you, you realize the woman is not sitting in her rocking chair uh, and is not seemingly have followed you outside the door is closed and the shop is boarded up there is no chair up front I guess I would look at everybody and be like so all of you are here for the school yes oh yeah I guess so <laughs> so I got the letter I presume all of you did where is the school I'm going to assume we take the train there. There is a silence as an individual leans over your shoulder, Connor, and says, you gave them your name? Oh. It is the individual in a pink coat. I didn't say it around that fucker. He's just walking along the alley. Not to you. Hmm. So you haven't. And he disappears. Better watch yourself. So, where do you go next? We need brooms. We need books. Yes, and familiars. Do you go to the magical menagerie for familiars? Or do you go get brooms? I'm going to speak up and say that I think brooms might shorten the rest of these trips up. We don't have to walk as far. If we're allowed to fly in here. Are there any no flying signs around? So you guys all look up. You see that the buildings are close, but far up in the distance, you see that there's a break. And up above the ruins, you see people flying about. Every so often, they'll land, but no one flies in the lower alley. I presume we have to know where we're going if we want to fly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where I'm going, so I'm going to wander and look at the shops. I mean, I know I want to find the books. I'm a bookworm. Books is where I'm heading for. So. Books, 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 books. Everybody going to follow Sabine to books? You're going to follow Sabine as well. That's the way to go. Fantastic. So you guys walk into a shop. Uh, you see books floating around uh, and you see a seven-armed individual, uh, one arm sticking out the very middle of their chest with a sort of double-handed hand, moving about books uh, seemingly without use of a wand. And the creature looks down at you from a tall pile of books and says, Oh, oh, good. Hmm. Uh, first years, as it were. Yes. What can I do for you? So we had that list with our letter, right? Yes. Okay. So I would go ahead and take out my list and be like, well, I need just about everything on here, sir. Hmm. Good, good. A full package for you all, I suppose. He uh, He kind of makes a few magical signs with his hands and various sets of books come floating down uh, in front of you. Yes, yes, all paid for by the school. Oh. Do you have a, a Magic Rich Kid edition where it's all just one book, depending on what I need? No. 
But what I do have is a selection of not paid for by the school books, should you want to peruse them. I would. Very yeah, well. Sir. Why not? Um, okay. He waves, and you see a set of stairs form out of uh, books that lead up to the upper stacks. This stay out of the black and red magic, if you would please. There are signs. As he waves you along, uh, you see that he seems to be reading out of four or five books at once while he's talking to you. Man after my own heart. <laughs> Mine uh, too. <laughs> some like trickster magic here. If you want to find a specific book, give me a brains roll. Okay. All right. Uh, Connor, go ahead and take a adversity token. Here. Oh, Sabine, go ahead and take an adversity token. Yeah. Tatsuo, what were you looking for? I'm going to ask him, where's the oldest book that's not the black or uh, red magic? He turns his entire head all the way around to look at you. Child, if, if I had any book that was that old, do you think I would sell it to you? Yes, probably frivolities of Cursum. It's uh, it's along the back back wall. It's a little known transcript of what they thought of whimsy in the Greek age. I like it. I'm gonna go take a look for it. Uh, you find a tome that is almost as big as you are, <laughs> um, and it is just massive it's obviously like an illumination of like an old scroll yeah that's been like redone in like the medieval times but it's just so huge do you think that that might be because they're trying to keep it from you know leaving whatever area it's in yeah it's probably about 150 pounds you can read it though i would love for you to read it uh connor what were you looking for specifically prank magic yeah trickster mm -hmm. magic uh, you find, not magic, but you do find a book of old trickster deities. And it's kind of a book of, like, whether they were, you know, the truth, the truth or fiction, you know? Gotcha. Books where, where they're trying to, like, well, this, this was actually a deity, and this was just some jackass in a magical suit and mask. What the helper uh, is it? Right? Sabine, what were you looking for here? Something on um, transformative magic, transfiguration. Mm. So you do find a section of transfigurative magic, but it's all under red magic. Of course. <laughs> you don't find anything specific, uh, like anything that you have like heard of, but you do see that there is a book here that is literally just a bunch of warning signs on the outside of the book. Oh. Anything else you, uh, any you guys want to try and find? I don't think I can read this whole book. I want to ask the bookkeeper, do, do you have any anything for students that uh, need a little extra help? My first time coming in. Yes. Uh, Dmitry Stroganov has a a whole shelf back there. He's rather tame, so to speak. You can, you can even show it to your parents if they're non-magical. All right, so but, I want to go. I want to go check out the shelf. Okay. Magical uh, breathing exercise. See what I can find there. <laughs> right. One of the recommended books is on the shelf. Dmitri Stroganov's. So your parents don't believe in magic. Also on this shelf is a book. So you're going to magic school and you've read books, but you're not sure what to expect. Dot, dot, dot. By Dmitry Stroganov. That's, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up that one. That's the one uh -huh. I want. Okay. You pick the book up and it's kind of all in Greek. The words kind of move around and dissolves into English. Like a little booklet on 
what to watch out for magically. You know, kids just first going into school. Most of it's kind of not applicable to you, but some of it's kind of helpful. You know, keep you from tripping over your own two feet. That kind of thing. I think that would be useful for me. Mm -hmm. Trying not to look like an idiot here. So the book is Two Silver. Okay. I don't know if they have any money. I don't think I have any money. Yeah. Okay. So you do you take the book up to the bookkeeper? No, because I am too proud to admit that I have no money. I'm just going to put it back and walk back to the front of the store. Uh, the bookkeeper looks down at you. Did you not find what you were looking for? Oh, there's some interesting books. Um, gonna have to come back at a later date. Hmm. Oh, I'll, 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 uh, I'll uh, front you some coin, but at a at a vig. Oh. Uh, no, no, it's it's fine. It's fine. I can I can come back. Oh. It sounds like the school's paying for everything you need. The school will not pay for leisure reading. Yes, but for what he needs. What was your name? You in the vest. Felix. My name is Felix. Felix. Dragon Quest. Felix Dragon Quest. Grand Quest. Grand Quest. Grand Quest. He pulls out a long list. Fantastically long list of names. And he puts uh, a small set of glasses that he holds up next to the list. Yes, well, he throws the list over his shoulder. And he says, you have a, what do they call it, in bars? A tab of 50 silver, courtesy of Barnaby Seltzer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the book and, and walk up front and put it on the counter then. Fantastic. Anybody else want to obtain a book? I would love to buy this book, but I don't think I can carry it. No, I suppose you probably cannot. Hm. I can have it delivered to your dorm room, I suppose. I will see you paid well. Mm, I'm sure. I don't accept IOUs. I hope you have someone at the bank that can vouch for you oh yeah oh yeah does the name ravine mean anything to you he uh he pulls out a different book of uh lineages and scans it for a few moments flipping through some pages he uh he kind of looks at you and he says hmm, i will send the bill forward to your parents zen could you could you make it out to my uncle? He will send the bill on. This time. You can uh, you can re-roll your brains roll if you're trying again to find something else. No, that was the only thing I had in mind for the moment, but I know I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Uh Connor, you gonna just... take the book that you have? No, I'm just gonna take what was supplied. Okay. At least for now. Um you've learned uh, just by like reading a few chapters that uh, the trickster god Anansi, the spider, uh, was in fact an actual deific entity. Oh. Yeah. Let's see. You can write that down somewhere under your strengths if you want. As something that you know. As you guys all leave the bookstore, where do you go next? You go for brooms? Or do you go for familiars? 